Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Tutenda and I am an environmental lawyer and a blogger at Arifo Nature. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're an oldie, it's good to have you back all the time and I really appreciate it. Today's video is just going to be one of my little chit chats about some of the places that I've visited. Specifically today, we are going to be talking about my trip to the iconic robin island in cape town south africa firstly i'm just going to lay out some quick facts about robin island for those of you who don't know about it or don't like or like know about it but just wonder what this place is actually about and then i'll just quickly share with you my thoughts about my experience there what i liked what i didn't like what i think could be improved on the tours and all of that and then i'm just going to show you a mini photo vlog of the visit when i went there i wasn't in a vlogging mindset so never really like took a proper vlog of it but i do have some pictures and i can share that so that you guys can actually see this place what it looks like and sort of like have a feel of feet and maybe it might entice you to actually visit this famed island so without wasting more time let's get into this video so firstly, what is Robben Island? That is a question that I also asked the first time I moved to South Africa and people were talking about Robben Island and I'm just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> okay, so this island is located in Cape Town, South Africa, as I mentioned, and it's about seven kilometers from the beaches in Cape Town. I'm talking about the Clifton beaches or if you're coming for, from Waterfront, it's also going to be about 7 to 10 k's from there in the water. So you're basically going to go on a boat there. Um, there's a Robin Island ferry that will take you to the island. This island is basically rich in political history and is most notable for what it represents in South African history specifically. And one of the things that make it remarkable is the fact that the former president Nelson Mandela served there for 18 years out of his 27 year jail sentence at that island. So now this island is like a national heritage in South Africa. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of all the history that it contains. Its history dates back way before apartheid in South Africa. Early settlers of the Dutch Cape Colony lived there since 1654, including their political leaders. And, and in the 17th or 18th centuries, political prisoners from the Dutch colonies or the Dutch East Indies were actually sent to Robben Island. And later on, it was used for World War II defenses. And there's actually some ammunition on the island from the period of World War II that you can see there that was left on the island and later on those who opposed apartheid in south africa were imprisoned on the island in present day this island that was formerly known as a place of banishment has become a museum people all over the world visit robin island to have a view of what the past of south africa was like and to take a look at nelson mandela's cell <laughs> Former prisoners from the island have emerged as presidents in South Africa. So, for, so President Nelson, former President Nelson Mandela, former President Jacob Zuma, and Kalima Mohlante. I hope I'm actually pronouncing that right. I don't know. But yeah, those people were once imprisoned on the island and emerged to be presidents later on in their lives. And secondly, the name Robin Island itself come comes from the word Robin, which is the Dutch word for seals. This came as a result of the massive seal colony that is that populated the shores of the island. So there's lots of seals around in and around Robin Island. So that's where it got its name from. And also another interesting fact, like I said, it's full of history. Um, it was previously a leprosy colony and people with mental illnesses were also sent there in the 19th century not only to isolate them from the rest of the society but they also believed that the climate of that island was it was healthy and good for them so they sent them there another interesting fact that i actually quite liked in some ways 
is that some people who were prisoners on the island back in the day are now serving as tour guides there now and what's more interesting about this is that it's not necessarily a gesture of reconciliation you know like post update we've reconciled now we can be here but it's mostly for financial reasons for most of them so it's quite interesting to see that quite a, that um that kind of a turn around you take a ferry from the vna waterfront in cape town at the nelson mandela gateway i think it's i think it's actually in the nelson mandela museum if i'm not mistaken <laughs> but that's the gateway you use there's like a huge robin island ferry i'll insert a picture there for you to see the tour itself costs about 400 rand for adult essay citizens and 210 rand for children who are also essay citizens and then if you are non-essay citizens it costs 600 rand for adults and 310 rand for children you need to present a copy of your id at the gate to prove whether you're a citizen or not so that's you know you don't cheat on the price but a very important tip about this is it is very great to travel on public holidays because there's always discounts whether for citizens or non-citizens you might get really good discounts especially if you're going to travel on heritage day which i did and the prices were very low for a robin island trip and the other important thing about the trip itself is that it is about four hours so it's not the kind of thing you want to go for when you're in a rush to go somewhere else or if you're on a tight schedule so it's four hours and those four hours include two ferry trips to and from robin island which are about 30 minutes each so you need to be prepared for that if you're a seasick person you need to be prepared for that um take the precautionary measures the necessary measures you need to in order to make sure that you're comfortable because you are going to go deep a little bit deep into the waters in order to get to the island and back and also another important tip if you're going to go for this thing is you need to wear comfortable clothes and shoes there's quite a little bit of walking and the ground is not so fit for heels or any uncomfortable shoes so make sure you are comfortable always all the time when you go for this particular trip and now moving on to some of the things that i loved or rather liked about the robin island experience is firstly it is a big beautiful place i would have never known about it if i hadn't gone there it has a life of its own a history of its own and like i said earlier what makes it more famous is the fact that prisoners from apathy were seen there and the fact that pres of the former president nelson mandela was there that makes it more famous however what i didn't know and maybe some people also don't know is there's a whole lot of stories around robin island apart from the ones that we already know and it was very interesting to go there and then you actually found out find out about all of this in my mind before i went there i just thought it's an island with a prison and yes it is an island with the prison but there's so much life at the island there are chapels there where people can attend church and you know like the biodiversity the nature around robin island itself is just so fresh and refreshing it's beautiful it's well conserved so it's literally like at this big this big beautiful island and when you're seeing it from afar it looks so small and it's easier for you to just say oh there's just a prison and nothing else but they actually there is actually something on robin island that is very really enjoyable if you're a nature lover like i say the biodiversity there is quite nice well beautiful actually and this uh the birds that you can see there um <laughs> and all of those things so i love the fact that what i had in my mind is actually not the only thing that's there there is so much more to see so much more to enjoy so much more to learn apart from what we just know um from the streets you know so i loved that about it and then secondly nature conservation biodiversity there is quite great and well maintained it's very conserved i remember that 
part the time they allowed us to actually walk we could not walk on the grass we could not walk in certain places because they were conserving those areas for nature purposes so i think like that, that is quite a really good thing because anything can happen there on an island especially if people are not monitoring so it was quite great and also like the oceanic views around the island itself are quite are, are quite great like mountains from the distance um even like from a nearby site what you see there is quite great and i really enjoyed that and you know like that sea smell is also quite nice <laughs> I actually went like they actually have like white sand somewhere there and some of the paths are a bit rocky but i actually wonder like um how the prisoners felt with that sea breeze hitting them for those minutes or oh, few hours that they were outside and if that's something they actually like i want to go outside and just feel this you know um, and the other thing that i loved is that the tour guides themselves have first-hand experiences and this makes the tours very informative because then you can actually ask them questions and they're telling you their answers their answers are from their own experiences and what they know because they were there on the island so for me it made it more informative i mean i know the fact that they were there on the island is not a good thing um <laughs> there's so much to be talked about on that aspect alone as most of them were just political prisoners and were sent there for no reason at all sometimes for just being black or not having a pass you know that type of thing but then i think for the purposes of this particular robin island tour it makes it more informative because i've actually been to like certain tours you know it could be anything like a cave tour or whatever and you ask the tour guide certain questions and they tell you that they don't know with this particular tour they will know because they were on the island so they know what they used to eat how big or small those meal, meal portions we actually actually were and you know when they got news or when they went out what it was like what a typical saturday was like at robin island or a typical monday typical sunday you know that type of thing they were there on the ground so they know about it and for me i think that was like something that i liked because like i said i could ask questions and they'd get answered and sometimes you don't even have to ask the questions someone just tells you their story they'll tell you when they got to robin island what life was like for those years or months they stayed on robin island and they will even tell you certain things that you're not going to see reported in the newspapers because the reporters would not have known about that but they would know about it because they were there on the island as well so yeah i really loved that part about it and then the other aspect that i loved about it is that it's just this beautiful preservation of history you know um like i said it dates way back to the 1600s and for me also like the fact that it's just a symbol of freedom in south africa is also something that i admire quite a lot and it's something that it shows where the nation came from and where it's supposed to go and i think when i was there i, I was actually thinking about oh so this is part of south africa's history it's part of the things that you look at and actually say people went to robin island they were sent to robin island to fight for fight for freedom in this country it is a part of the story and for me it's quite beautiful as someone who's been living in south africa for years i think it's also very important for me to also participate and also like know their history where they came from and what the intention was for the whole fight where they are supposed to go i think also part of my part of it is coming from my human right from a human rights perspective where i want to know what was life like then and what is it now and what should be done or where are we supposed to go from that perspective and robin island is like a very nice place and very nice symbol that you can use or you can look at and actually say this is where people were this is where we are what adjustments need to be made so for me it was like quite nice to also have that sort of like a not a wake-up call but to also have a moment where you're actually thinking about those things and thinking about south africa post apartheid where are we what are we doing where where are we doing great and where are we having challenges so that was quite great for me moving on to disappointments or rather <laughs> some things that i didn't like 
or maybe not didn't like so much i would have loved to explore more of the island than what is included in the normal tour and this is coming from the fact that the tour has certain places that people have to see and like i said some places you're allowed to walk some you're not allowed to walk and i love that because you know if it's for nature conservancy purposes then i'm totally with them for that on, on that but then i feel like most like okay when you get to the island when you get off the ferry you're gonna go on a bus and that bus is the bus that's gonna be taking you literally everywhere around the island so for me because i'm also like that person who want to be hands-on i want to walk the island i want to feel things i want to feel the trees i want to feel like a building like i say there's so many things there like the chapels that people used to used for attending church and stuff back in the day like i would have just loved to just go inside and see what it actually looks like you know there's so many buildings there and for example like the robert sobukwe house also is there but for some reason it's not part of the tour they just pointed to us and said that's the robert sobukwe house but then you don't actually get there or like see what it was like so for me like i said i would have loved to explore more especially on foot because you know i'm like that person however the fact that you can't explore more doesn't take away anything from the experience itself i'm just speaking from a personal point of view where i'm saying i would have actually loved to maybe just take a longer walk on the island see more things than what is re what is off currently offered on the tours but honestly you can still have the best robin allen tour with what's already there the other thing <laughs> i don't know if i can call it a disappointment i mean something i really wanted to see when i went there but i guess it didn't like it didn't match my expectations in some ways or maybe it's because i was just so excited about it i really wanted to see it and when i finally got to see it i had an oh that's it kind of moment and that is the nelson mandela cell and my experience of it was just like oh so that's it okay and we're not even allowed to go inside the cell which is fine because you don't want to mess it up but at the same time just like this little small thing i'm going to insert a picture somewhere there so that you can see it and it's just like that's it i don't know like maybe i had expectations that were higher than they should have but what i can certainly say is that i wasn't as excited as i was before i saw it so for me it's a, it was a kind of a, it was kind of like an uh okay like when i think of robin island i'm not that the first thing i'm gonna think about is the beat is the oceanic views the nature around the around the island and and not Nelson Mandela's cell and yet it is one of the selling points of the museum you know of the island so <laughs> I don't know but that's just me you know um I was a bit dis disappointed on that aspect it's not to say don't go and say it I mean we all want to say it um <laughs> uh, yeah it's a it's a nice experience just seeing what just seeing what his story was like you know um what his life was actually like in robin island where he used to sleep and sort of like looking at his story as well before during the time and after it's quite a beautiful thing but i'm just saying like i had a moment with it so yeah but don't mind me that's just me <laughs> and then the other thing that i would the i would say i didn't like about the robin island tour it's not in relation to the tour itself but um i think i just think that as a place of history it should be more accessible to people and by people i mean it should be more accessible to the majority of people it's a museum it's a it's a very important place of history i don't see why its prices have to be that high because that means the majority of people are not going to be able to visit this iconic place you know and especially if it's that kind of place that holds so much history i think a lot of people should be able to access and access it and um experience it see what it looks like that this place 
what this place looks like that everybody keeps talking about everybody who talks about the fight for freedom in south africa cannot talk about that without talking about robin island and i think the majority of people should be able to go there no matter where they are coming from it shouldn't be an expensive tour because you can't be thinking about oh that's gonna cost me 600 rand or that's gonna cost me 400 rand i feel like it should the prices should be much lower and more accessible to the majority of people considering the circumstances in south africa i don't think the tour really caters for you know everybody but on the other hand i do understand that there are workers still on the island so though their lives still need to be catered for they still need to get reasonable income and at the same time the island itself still needs to be maintained so maybe the costs are high because of all of those things but i'm just saying low-key i feel like the prices are too high for the majority of south africans and as a place of great history it should be a bit more accommodating of the economic dynamics of the nation um, and then the other thing that was a bit more was a bit disappointing for me as well is the fact that it provided a reality check so i'm not saying that the reality check was disappointing in the sense that it shouldn't have done that but i'm saying that i think i mentioned this earlier when you get there if you're someone like me who's just like thinking <laughs> randomly about things and i can be deep with things that are not supposed to be deep but anyway um you it's it's a bit inevitable to think of robin island and not think about the struggle for freedom in africa or in south africa specifically you now want to think about what it represents for south africa and you now think about like what i mentioned earlier what it represents for south africa where south africa came from where it is right now and just thinking about that can be quite sad it can be heartbreaking thinking about thinking about the fact that people fought for freedom some lost their freedom and were imprisoned there for years only to fight for something that is not being fully implemented now so now you're thinking about it you think you actually look at where is south africa right now and what you see is South Africa is still far from achieving the things that the people back in the day were fighting for. And that is very disheartening, you know, that is disappointing because I don't think back then when they were fighting, they were thinking that in 2021, all the things they were fighting for would have, would still be there. And I think what's even worse is some of these things are happening as a result of the people who were even in those prisons, like people who we're also part of that fight are now still causing this are not really solving those issues that were there back back in the day and when i'm talking about this i'm talking about the fact about how south africa is to a vastly unequal society to this day and back in the day yes they're fighting the apartheid reg regime but then right now that's not the regime that's there but at the same time the one that's there it's not really solving all of those issues people are still living in poverty people there's still racism in the country in as much as we say we are one we are a diverse nation we're a rainbow nation everybody is accepted no matter of who you are where you're coming from it's not so much like that xenophobia is everywhere um the lgbti community is still being discriminated upon women are still facing the struggles they used to face back in the day there's a whole range of inequalities that are still happening in south africa democracy is not democracy as it should be because you might find that some processes that are really supposed to be to be democratic are not are not done in that kind of way certain people's voices are not heard in certain processes and that is not what people were fighting for so it's robin island for me was that kind of a place where after all the experience after all the excitement it just got me thinking we are still far away from achieving the things that people were fighting for back in the day and more needs to be done people need to be intentional we need to think back what is it that we're fighting for and what are we doing to achieve it what have we done so far where do we need to improve why are we lacking in that area what mistakes are we are we making i think that's the direction we should be going now because it is very clear that we are far from achieving those things we were people were fighting for back in the day so i like i said it was just like a reality check for me where i'm actually thinking people came here fighting for this is it there now like can we stand here right now and actually say south africa is a free nation 
can we stand here right now and say South Africa is an equal nation nobody is discriminated against on whatever grounds is it something we can say and is can we say that with pure honesty that South Africa is a democratic nation can we really say that or can we say there are some instances where we are where democratic processes are followed and there are some instances where the democracy is a bit questionable so like i said that kind of thing just just thinking about that like where south africa is and how far it is from where it's supposed to be was a bit disheartening and that's the reality check you get from just visiting a place like robin island so in some ways i loved that it got me thinking like that and i hope a lot of people will go they also think that way but uh, but like i said i have that kind of, i'm but like i said i'm like that kind of a person i can go deep on things that may not necessarily need to be deep but i think this one was, i was a bit more disheartened by it and also she like no man people served here for years only for the nation to still be here 20 years down the line no we can't have this so yeah um that was one of the things that just um disheartened me about the robin island visit Thank you very much for watching this video i hope it was very informative and you all liked it and perhaps are also planning your own little robin island visit from wherever you are coming from or putting it on your south africa bucket list for travel it is it is generally a must visit especially if you're in cape town if you want to go to robin island the same way you also want to go visit table mountain you should also visit robin island <laughs>